welcome back, this is Bowler Scoop, but with more Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 1, I am joined, as always, by Chief Shion Uzuki. And unfortunately, in that last session, I did mess up a couple things, so I have gone ahead and corrected them by not going to Shion's room just yet. So, I've done everything I did last time, except for going to Shion's room. I will do that again off-screen, but Shion's room is actually the trigger uh, for the end of when you can actually get something over here. And there's an email for Xion, so I am sorry if you were following my walkthrough, I guess you could call it a walkthrough, <laughs> and you were trying to get 100% completion, uh, there, yeah, there's an email here that you might miss. It's not really important, to be honest with you. You could easily skip this. It's another ad, uh, this time for Smash Court Tennis. Um, once again, don't know if this is real or not. I assume that, it, that this stuff is real, and I just don't remember it. Um, so I don't care, really. But the, the trigger is going to Xion's room. After, once you have done that, you cannot get this email anymore. But if you miss it, like I said, I don't think it's a big deal, but I do want to at least attempt 100%. So. If it's easy for me to fix, I will go back and fix it. On top of that, because I had to redo it, there are a couple things that I did differently. I have a little bit more tech tech points now. I think I have 22 instead of 4, uh, because I actually had to do two eggs battles in order to get the spell ray upgraded. Uh, while I was working on that, though, I figured I might as well upgrade uh, Medica again. I evolved it so that I could also get goodbye. So I could escape from battle. Uh, not that that's going to be that useful. Uh, probably this entire session. I know you're probably thinking the same thing I am. Hey, Baller. You haven't had a real battle yet. It's all been simulated battles. Are we ever going to get a real battle? Yeah, maybe. Uh, let's look in the items because I also did get those two med kits that I mentioned that the guards uh, handed out. Uh, so now I'm up to 13, 8, 9, 11 pretty good here. Uh, I actually did purchase two more revives and I purchased three biospheres which I misidentified uh, uh, in the last session. I called them um, elixirs. They are not elixirs, they're tents. Uh, they're not omegasols. I can't remember what they were called in um, in Xenogears, the tent items. Uh, they might have just been tents and that's probably why I can't remember it but uh, whatever uh, they're called, it's the whole party, HP and HP full recovery, but only at save points. Uh, the giant gold things, they're hard to miss. Outside of that, everything is the same. So, now that I have gotten that mail, actually there is one more person that I want to talk to. It's not you, is it? It is not you, you are Evelyn. Don't let, it'll go better, what? Me. Uh, th well, they do have new stuff to say here. I don't remember Evelyn. Um, but there is one more person here. We can go up these stairs. They just lead up here, which is pretty much a dead end. And, hey, it's Janice. Taking a break, Janice? You're not allowed to break. Uh, Janice here. I did not catch the first time because I didn't see the stairs for whatever reason. She wants us to take a break. Yeah, of course. No need to worry about me. Yeah, if you say so. Oh, that's right. There's some valuable info that I wanted to share with you. It's not that valuable. I was actually keeping it quiet, hoping you'd notice on your own, but since it doesn't look like you will, I guess I'll have to tell you. What? You know that there's a red vector box inside the Encephalon, right? You mean the red vector box where all the equipment is kept? Uh, where we fought the boss and where we got the battle passport? Yeah, she tells us about the battle passport. Yeah, that's the one. We put a little something in there for you to show our appreciation for all your hard work. We were hoping you would pick it up during the last experiment, but considering how things went, you definitely didn't have to time to find it. Anyway, I think you'll like it. So she tells us to go back and get the battle passport in case you missed it. Um, if I remember correctly, you don't need to get it right now in case you did miss it. I think there is going to be a way for us to go back in and get that. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a way. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go back and get to the point where Shion is ready to go to bed. And I will meet you back there. 
and I'm back. So, before we do go to bed, uh, I'm going to do something that will probably become a habit of starting each new session. I'm going to go look at the database just a little bit. Once again, uh, the first session that we went through the database will be the longest time that I spend here. Uh, there's not that much that was added. They do have Bookworm in here. It doesn't look like Xion's brother is an average Bookworm, though, unfortunately. Well, I guess not, unfortunately. Uh, they do go over Jin a little bit here, too. Uh, but what I really want to talk about here is the EPR paradox. And this, I think, is kind of important. Uh, if you don't understand it, I guess that's fine, too. Uh, the EPR paradox is a paradoxical theory presented in 1935 by Albert Einstein, Boris Podolsky, and Nathan Rosen in support of their argument that quantum mechanics still falls short in its explanation of reality. A simple theoretical experiment to illustrate this paradox consists of a particle decaying into two identical particles. I always like to think of uh, helium splitting into two identical hydrogen atoms. Uh, because the internal angular momentum or spin of the particle must be conserved, the two decaying particles will have a, two opposing spins. As these particles decay, they are launched in opposite directions. When the distance between the two particles reaches a great distance, say several light years, the spin of one of the particles is measured. At the precise moment the spin of one particle is determined, the spin of the other can be determined to be in the opposite direction because the two spins must equal zero. Pretty much angular momentum must be conserved. So if we have a helium atom that's not spinning, it decays into two hydrogen atoms, and one of them is spinning, the other one must be spinning in the opposite direction, right? Herein lies the paradox, since quantum mechanics dictates, dictates that the intrinsic property of an entity cannot be determined until it is actually measured, uh, Schrodinger's uh, cat is what they're talking about there, uh, by determining the spin of the second particle several light years away without measuring it. The experiment would introduce the existence of some strange force that can transmit the information of the first particle spin to the second particle faster than the speed of light, a force that cannot be explained by quantum physics. I, I'm not sure that's what Einstein was talking about, this, this mysterious force. I think he kind of uh, threw the paradox out there to kind of say, see, quantum mechanics doesn't, is, is, can't be true because of this. Um, I, I do know that Einstein, during uh, pretty much the second half of his life, fought against quantum mechanics. Um, to be honest, he lost that battle. Uh, quantum mechanics turned out to be true. I don't fully understand it. Uh, I am no expert on quantum mechanics, but most of the scientists say quantum mechanics was true and Einstein was wrong about it. Uh, the reason that this is kind of important is that this is pretty much the game's justification for warp speed, for gating in and gating out, is that somehow using this paradox, they seem to... This is the justification that I've found for it. The only justification that i found is that they can exceed light speed uh, by using the EPR paradox to send a ship somehow from one spot to another. I don't see, I, I think that is quite a stretch, to say the least. I don't, I don't really see how it relates, but they say that the UMN uses the EPR paradox, doesn't it? Don't, don't they? That's what it seems like to me. Uh, and basically their justification is that the EPR paradox and quantum mechanics is true and there is some strange force that can transmit information faster than the speed of light that's their justification but the epr paradox necessarily isn't true because uh, when you get down to the molecular level uh, spins and positions and all that kind of stuff is not always th they don't follow normal physics uh, they follow quantum mechanics, which is why it's a whole different... Whatever, I'm moving on. Because I, I don't know very much. I'm out of my field there. But from what I understand, this that's not true. Um, then there's the radar, which uses the EPR paradox to overcome limits imposed by the speed of light. Uh, pretty much, this is how you can gate in and gate out, supposedly. 
let's just move on. But I thought that was interesting. Here we do have Jin's entry. You can see he's 35 years old. He's Shion's older brother, uh, full blood brother. And I know that I spoiled that he's in the next game. So does this game. It says there right at the bottom. Uh, he, he's not going to get his moment to shine until the next episode. Um, but what, what it says here is kind of weird to me. It said it is difficult to discern his characteristics from just the visuals, but he does appear to be hiding something behind that goofy look. Uh, I Once again, I have played all three games. I don't remember Jin ever having a goofy look on his face. He is not that kind of a character. But apparently he is an expert swordsman. Reminds me of another Uzuki. Let's move on. Um, what else was there? Oh, uh, memorial service. Just real quick, uh, I would always assume this is some kind of wake or funeral. Apparently they were referring to the Buddhist practice where you hold a memorial every seven days for 49 days, you know, so once a week for, for seven weeks, and then every anniversary of, uh, of the day that they died, I assume. Uh, they're trying to say right now that it wasn't like their their parents had just died that there was a memorial i guess for an anniversary maybe it was weeks later uh they haven't really implied that i guess this is their way of saying oh by the way no no, no her parents didn't just die uh it's it's something that happened a while ago either sometime within the 49 days or this is years later I assume they mean years later. Uh, Jin had apparently read a uh, about this tradition in a book and was attempting to recreate it, but is uncertain whether he is in fact a practicing Buddhist. Uh, they think not. Uh, they don't really go into that kind of stuff in this game. Religion is kind of out of bounds for most uh, for most games. Not usually. Well, we will get to that when we get to that. Maybe if we do. And. Was there anything else? Oh, way down here. Yes. Uh, Zohar. If I have not already mentioned this before, I will mention it now. Google at your own risk. You could accidentally spoil the game for yourself trying to research some of these topics. Um, Zohar being one of them. Because it is... Well, yeah. Th there's no way around it here. It is a religious text. Uh, the, the Zohar in the game refers to a mysterious golden object and the focal point of the story throughout the entire Xenosaga series. That, that is true. We will be talking about Zohar for, for quite some time. Uh, the word originates from Zohar, Book of Splendor, a central area work of the Kabbalah. I don't know that much about the Kabbalah. From what I understand, it is an, either an analysis or a commentary or an interpretation of the Talmud. And the Talmud is either an analysis a commentary or an interpretation of the Torah and the Torah is, uh, is the collection of the first five books that are in this, the same first five books that are in the Bible um, I've read the first five books in the Bible um, I'm, I'm not sure because the Zohar and the Kabbalah are supposed to have a lot of mysticism around them there are a lot, there's a lot of mis mystery around what's actually in them I haven't read them myself I want to to be honest with you but uh, they they're very long <laughs> uh, so i haven't i haven't done it um what mystery is in there i i couldn't tell you but the, it, it's jewish I, I i can say that and finally we do have the 100 series observational units which we have not seen yet but we're supposed to be on the Wogland day uh they're capable of unleashing the hilbert effect which we don't know what is yet because they have not gone over that but that's it for the database for now. Let's go ahead and go to sleep. Uh, this is quite a turning point in the game. You might have, I might have given that away, but yeah. Like I said before, it's been a while since we've been in a battle, that's for sure. And none of it has been real. It's all been in a simulation. Hopefully we don't go back into a simulation after this. What the hell was that? Good night. Good night, necklace. And then she just passes out on top, wearing pretty much her full outfit. I think she took off her jacket, but that was it. Everything else is the same. And now we're black, back in black and white, uh, going through the V4 field or all the stuff that they talked about in the database that went over color blindness. Uh, apparently, it also takes away her ability to hear anything because, well, maybe just people talking. You can hear the wind rustling the grass. 
Is that a ding? Are oh, the fries done? Oh, it's the little girl again. How you doing, little girl? You gonna say something, little girl? I like your... I would say crucifix, but it looks like an, just a giant plus. Who the hell is that? I can only make a silhouette. He has spiky hair, whoever that is. That I can make out. Huh. All that means to me is that he's probably Japanese. I have to use gel to spike my hair. In Japan, I'm pretty sure it just grows naturally that way. Based on the evidence that I've seen. That's kind of creepy, little girl. You gonna say anything? No? Just gonna stare out into space, are you? God, I love the space backdrop. I'm a big space nerd. As I'm sure you've been able to figure out. I don't know that much about astrophysics. I'm always trying to learn more. But I do love space. And it is night abon uh, on board the, the Woglin Day. That's kind of creepy when you show off the Zohar again like that. I'm going to go ahead and call that the Zohar from now on. Since that's the only name that they've given us. I'll be honest, this is kind of creepy. Is something bad going to happen? No. We're not zooming in. Wait, what? No. Nothing's going to... Okay, good. No. What it, the... You're all still here? Yeah. Hold on. Cosmos. Hey, how's it going? It's gonna We're wake up or something. We're trying to pinpoint today's problem, among other things. What about you? What about me? Oh, Commander Cherenkov gave me a piece of his mind earlier. Ouch. Glad to see you survived. That guy's relentless. You act like a bunch of college kids. And what, is Vector run by a Girl Scout? Yes. It just went on and on. Man, that's just not right. Seriously. But it isn't right to have the Chief taking all the heat. Still, I wonder why he seemed so nervous. I remember Cherenkov just got yelled at by his superior. No! What was his name? Margulis? Yeah, his name was Margulis. Just got yelled at by Margulis, so of course he had to pass it on down the line. Shit rolls downhill. Now exiting the asteroid field. All right. That's excellent. Good. Prepare to gate jump. Yes. Let's use aye our aye super Captain. science. All ships entering approach. Nineteen minutes. Thirty seconds to column area. That's still a long. UMN time. pulse received. Current coordinates locked. Transfer vector correction to one zero three. Target Athens column. What's that? Is that an alert? Captain, a warning signal. Yellow alert. It can't be. Is it them? No, sir. Okay. The detection oh. system is silent. How's it look on your side? Nothing over here either. Are you sure it's not an error? This is the future. We don't do errors. No, no, it's not. What is this? In the future, everything works What's all going the time. On? Sir, I don't think an external source is causing this warning signal. What? Then what's causing it? Something inside? I'll run a search. I've pinpointed the anomaly. It's inside the ship. Sector 3. Sector 3. 